Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Uncle Wildlife Centre. Before I introduce the animal we are building for today, let's get on to what our character Ashleen is up to. Ashleen seemed to recognise Newt but couldn't get her mind around of who he was, where he came from. But just as, just as she thought Newt Austin shouted that he was from Sycamore Farm, where Ashleen grew up um, and went to there many times, and Newt kind of explained to her how he left the farm in search for a different career path and flew all the way over to the Middle East and searched all the mountain ranges all around the equatorial area. And just as she thought he was finished explaining, Ashleen gets a call that four injured capybara have been in a river polluted, sadly, by a mining works around nearby. So, of course, she decides to rescue them and decides that, with Newt in hand, they can help build the new habitat. But also, as you can see nearby, Ashleen has also rescued three Galapagos giant tortoises. A nearby local in the village has sadly passed away and his three tortoises have no home left to go to. So they have, of course, been put in the sanctuary for further treatment and obviously getting ready to be released into the wild but we see how they get along their path they may or may not be entering the wild anyway guys thank you so much for the support from last episode and moving into the time lapse i just wanted to give a big thank you to all for the support and definitely the feedback um, from the last episode has pushed me to improve this video and continue on with the sort of style the story i've got going on currently as you probably heard, I've, of course, linked in some of my older series. So for those that watched Sycamore Farm, you know, or well, you don't know Newt, but he was one of the characters there, which obviously I've started to kind of conjure up now. But he was he was working at Sycamore Farm for a, a brief while. Um, so, yeah, it's just nice to kind of incorporate that as well. Um, I've also introduced the Middle Eastern style um, and obviously him being a hiker just because I want to incorporate the palace cat somehow and that's the best way I can think of. So before we get into that, I just wanted to introduce you to the four capybara we've got here. So we have two males and two females that have been rescued from the river. We've got Bethany and Patricia and we've also got Santiago and Arthur. Arthur is the dominant male in the herd where he bosses around everyone, specifically poor Patricia, and forces them all to get into the water and kind of make them swim around until they've done some exercise. It's a little bit of a character trait that he has, which is quite a little annoyance for the keepers because he also tries to do it to them. It is unknown of the Galapagos giant tortoises' names, sadly, but Ashleen is starting to brainstorm some names. Um, so we'll find out next episode to see what their names are. In between each episode, there's just going to be a little bit of extra done to the Galapagos tortoise area. Um, they're going to be there for a while. And because it's a bit of a, a rush and emergency that, they, that they've just come in, it's obviously going to take a little bit of time for them to get used to that area. They've got a little bit of enrichment. So as you can see, I've built them like a log tunnel with some brushes. Um, you'll find commonly that they, ha in like zoos or anywhere like where they keep tortoises, they have like a tunnel of like big brushes and the tortoises will walk through them and kind of scrub themselves. Um, I own some tortoises and they do like a little scratch. So it is definitely a good thing that happens um, and quite a clever idea to enrich them. Um, sadly, that's not an enrichment in the game, but I hope so in the future. I have also done some more work off camera where there is a little bit of a flower garden as you've probably seen a little bit of and glimpses of. I'm going to do some custom billboards because um, obviously plants is going to be a big thing in the zoo. Um, last episode you saw that I've done a stumpery in the entrance. This area is going to be more focused on like a flower meadow. It's quite important in the mountains specifically that there's um, obviously bees and insects pollinating all these plants um, specifically in tropical rainforest it's a very big thing and it's not just tropical rainforest it's also like cloud rainforest temperate rainforest all of them sort of places and just generally every habitat and ecosystem needs pollinators so it's quite important that i have that education there 
and because it's at the entrance a lot of people are probably going to overlook it and just want to quickly rush but if you're exiting we've got the exit path to the right and you go past um, sort of like a water feature I've done in the entrance and most likely people will read it on the way out um, as they're going through the gift shop so that's quite a good idea I thought myself as you probably have seen in the thumbnail I've also added a outbuilding that I've built myself it's probably about the third time where I've done this I have built a barn before and I've built I think maybe one more in Wildwood Zoo but very rarely have I ever built my own sort of indoor area and I'm going to have a specific episode later on where I fill in all the backstage areas um, so it's going to be almost like a little external episode where it's just going to be like a rather than an animal in a habitat it's just going to be a, a giant bombardment of all the different sort of backstages for all the animals so there's going to be all different types and I'm going to do the best I can but it's not going to be the best because I've never built a backstage area before but obviously like the armadillo doesn't have a 100% backstage area they've just got the indoor area but it's similar but it's not going to have the same sort of metallic -y, um cutting boards and stuff like that so do expect that in the future i'm not going to do it in this episode because then again it, it will just take me too long i've spent long enough building this habitat um so i just wanted to get on with it um move on to the next one and then eventually i'll go back and i'll be in the sort of routine to keep doing it and i'll find a way to make it repeatable because obviously in zoos they have notice boards that all kind of look the same so if you do move from one habitat it's about similar so you don't have to train someone to do something different not only that but i've also built my own fence i'm not 100 percent happy with it but i'm actually pretty impressed with how it turned out i think it's quite a good idea for sort of this sort of habitat where the capybaras aren't gonna necessarily jump up and eat you or they're not aggressive or any sorts um except after the but yeah they're definitely the karma species but having that separation kind of shows people that you know it is a wild animal you shouldn't have to take pictures because they have become quite big of a meme recently where people think they're quite chill but they are the largest rodent in the world they do have big teeth so just making sure people understand that they have barriers too and you don't want to cross them Moving on to some capybara facts, which I have not built a capybara on this channel. So, I mean, a capybara habitat on this channel. So, I will definitely be saying some facts. So, as, as I said previously, the capybara is the world's biggest rodent. Um, it's very closely related to guinea pigs. And they are ranging between 35 to 66 kilograms, which is very, very heavy. Um, so, it's similar to like a medium small dog. Um, the largest one was 91 kg, which is 201 pounds. So they're very, very big and also very, very cute. Um, they are quite social animals, so they are like to be kept in groups. Um, when people keep them as pets, they are usually kept solitary and then they become very, very shy. So it's very important they have um, other capybaras, not just like a dog that they can actually communicate with. They are also semi-aquatic mammals, which means you'll find them by tropical rivers, swamps, lakes, and all that sort of areas. They're extremely good swimmers. In fact, in Planet Zoo, they are able to deep dive, but I haven't done that in this habitat. They can hold their breath for five minutes at a time. They have webbed toes so they can swim, and their eyes is nose are very high up on their head, so you'll find they've got that in, that's why they're so interesting, because they've just got everything really high up. And that actually helps them sleep in the water. They're very susceptible to sunburns and they're quite commonly sunburnt. So to stop and reduce that, they sleep in the water um, and you have their just about their noses peeking up so they can breathe. They are very, very hard to keep in captivity, um, mainly because their teeth grow constantly. So you always have to give them something to grind their teeth down on. So it makes them very hard to enclosed in habitats because they chew everything which can be pretty pretty difficult they are very very common to escape zoos i'm pretty sure there was one recently that had a capybara escaped and they used a thermal imaging camera to find them in long grass which is very very funny um, they're also picky eaters so they tend to focus 
all their efforts on one species of grass and just avoid everything around it. So it's a bit hard to get them to eat the things they need to. So, well, I say that they also do eat their own poop. Um, it's called autocoprophagus when they do that. And it basically contains bacteria which helps them digest their plant matter, which is quite important. Um, but even though they're like eat grass and they're very healthy vegans and do, they do all that, like humans, they are unable to produce their own vitamin C. So they have to consume lots of it in their diet. Otherwise, they are known to get scurvy. And specifically, capybaras bred in captivity have been known to get scurvy just because their diets aren't sufficient enough, which is why when I do these backstage areas, you will see some, for example, billboards or posters and like um, check checklists to kind of show what their diet is and how it goes on rotors to help them. Funny enough, the reason why they are such memes recently, not only because they're quite chill and relaxed, it's because they don't mind when other animals kind of sit on top of them. They've been known well, been known to be called moving chairs just because birds kind of sit on them um, monkeys so there's pictures of like spider monkeys on them rabbits they've all been taking a ride on the capybara and because they can run up to I think they can run up to 35 kilometers an hour which is extremely fast then very easy to get away from predators so it's a very good way for them animals they are very hard to eat so let's say you're like a, oh god I can't even name a carnivore and thingamajiggy, but basically large carnivores, so ju the jungle's biggest predators basically, they eat them. So that could be a jaguar, an ocelot, a puma, um, crocodiles, so caimans, anacondas, they all eat them. And you can look up many videos of like anacondas eating them. They're, it's just mad how they can fit that in their mouth. I don't understand how they do it, it's scary. But obviously capybaras are not directly at threat but they are very closely near the edge mainly because they are hunted for their meat and skin um, that obviously makes local populations completely eradicated they do breed very well so they are you know there's high populations of them but they can drastically stop and a big factor in this is pollution um, sadly when mining comes up, it leaches into the rivers and it basically causes heavy metals to go into there. Um, specifically in the Amazon, there are lots and lots of mining facilities um, where the Capybara live and those metals sadly leach into the rivers and the Capybara's waters where they sleep in, you know, that becomes polluted. It sort of goes into their skin and causes some horrible things happen to them so that's the story of our capybaras how they came to us they have been in a obviously near a mining site and they've been taken to us to rescue them there was actually one place where they were going to but they were full up that's how sad it is that they had to actually come to us so they've got very lovely habitat here we obviously will take more on such as saving them from pet trade you can keep them as pets in the US um, obviously some places don't allow them but they are quite commonly kept as pets but yeah I'm afraid we have come to the end of this video please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel um, I will definitely be putting out more content um, it might come in slower quantities as we come into the DLC season for Planet Zoo um, obviously with the new one coming out and the African leopard I'm not too sure if I'm well I'm definitely not going to build for the African leopard but I might kind of find a story I do have a couple of ideas to incorporate the palace cats obviously and maybe some of the other animals coming I'm crossing my fingers that we get the tree kangaroo and spectacle bear but I don't think that's going to happen maybe I know there was a thing saying our oh, good fellows was in the thingy and tree kangaroo but I very much doubt it so far um, I don't know if it's going to be like a celebration pack but I really hope the spectacled bear comes in because that would be a great animal to have in the mountains here in South America 
But then again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one. I can't tell you what we're going to have on the next one, but I will see you then. See ya, bye.